Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about wheels, the do's and the don'ts of finding the right ones, and also my new ones. Let's roll. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Run 11. Today, what we're gonna be talking about are wheels, and most importantly, the wheels that go on this bad boy, my 996. But first, I want to run through a couple of things that have actually changed since we last spoke to each other. A little few amendments around the vehicle. I had the boys at Colorcraft sort out the front of the car. Now you may remember I had seven holes around the front of that vehicle after I took the front plates off. Now you're probably wondering, why are you taking the front plates off, Sean? Isn't that illegal? Completely. Do I care? Definitely not. It looks so much better. Look at that front end. It gives it a real sharp look, and everyone who sees it says the same thing. So what they did, they took the bumper off, and they also took the side skirts off, and also the rear spoiler. Now the front bumper, what they did is they stripped it back, and it's in plastic welding, which is putting plastic across the holes, melting it in place, and then they took the paint off, and also primer, reprimed it, painted it, onto the back on. They did a fantastic job getting the paint matching, so it looks bare Anyway, moving on to the side skirts, how they sorted that out, they uh, just added lacquer on it because they were starting to fade, and the same with the rear spoiler. Red is one of those colors that can be an absolute ache, but at the same time, just look at it. Magnificent. Suffice to say, dead happy with that. It looks proper. So, we want to talk about wheels, don't we? Let me show you the new ones I just I got for the 996. So the first thing I want to touch upon is this awesome rubber here. Now, I'm going to be running Michelin Pilot Sport 2's front and rear of my vehicle, uh, and I'm going to be running 285, 30 at the rear, and 225, 40 at the front. At the moment, I'm running Michelin Pilot Sport 4's. However, they don't have the necessary width at the rear available in the UK yet, which is silly, and I'd much rather run PS4 S's, but again, not much of a choice going on there. Oh, look at this. Some wheelage. So, let's open it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we've got a few rules that we need to go through when choosing your next wheels for your car. And this doesn't matter whether it's a Porsche, a Volkswagen, a Vauxhall, whatever. These are the do's and don'ts when you're looking to change your wheels. Do make sure that they actually look good. Think of wheels as a decent pair of shoes. Now you're not gonna be going to an interview wearing a suit, wearing cons. I mean, you could if the interview is X Factor and you wanna try and do a boy band style look, but it isn't gonna work. So do your research, see what styles of wheels already go onto your car. Look at other cars in forums, in Facebook pages, on Instagram. You don't have to go for the same wheels as everyone else. Of course not. You can go for completely different wheels if you want. Just remember, you may be ruining the complete aesthetics of the car. It may just not work, whatever you try. Don't scrimp on your wheels. There's that whole scene of fake wheels can off. And do you know what? They can. You don't invest the right money in wheels, and bearing in mind, they're almost in contact with the road. But without wheels that are strong enough, you can find yourself in a real sticky situation, whether it's on the road or a track day. Not all wheels are made equal, so it's worth investing in a decent brand. Think VBS, think Volk, Raze, even Team Dynamics. You know, these brands have been around for a long time and they've not only invested a lot of money in the technology, they've done it through motorsport. So you know and can guarantee that these wheels are gonna be strong and fit for purpose. Do measure the size of your wheels and also the fit. Now fitment is made up of a certain number of things. You have the pitch circle diameter, you have the pitch circle diameter or PCD, which is the measurement around those lug holes on a wheel. Now fortunately on Porsches, most of them are five by 130. Sans a couple of cars, 4x108 on a 924, 4x130 on a 914, 5x112 on a Macan. 
for everything else is five by 130. So that's pretty simple. Also, you've got to make sure you have the right sized wheels, diameter, the width. Now, wheels are always measured in diameter and the majority of the time measured in inches. Standard on the 996, there were 17s with a maximum size you can go for of 18s. There's a few people that stick 19s on and fair play to them. I always like a bit more rubber than alloy. So for me, I would always go for an 18 inch wheel. Biggest I'd go for on the 996. Also widths. The wheels, as far as I'm aware, never came in a square setup. Square setup meaning they were the same width at the front as they were to the rear. Standard widths on a 996 are seven and a half front and 10 at the rear. Aim to make sure you go for similar kind of widths. The reason why they're wider at the rear than the front is because there is a rear wheel drive bias, whether it's a C2 or C4, and you want as much traction at the back of a car. Another thing to ensure that you measure up is the offset, often referred to as ET. Oh, oh, sorry. Now, ET or offset is a measurement between the back of the wheel to the hub, okay? Now, depending on the offset, it may mean your wheel stick out further or actually tuck in further. I change the offset by fitting spaces into the wheels. And the same goes for my next wheels, because fortunately, they are the right fitment for my car. Now, without getting too technical, because there's a host of other information there, ensure that the offset is correct. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you're buying your wheels from a reputable company, why don't you ask them for their opinion as well? If you're being looked after by a good bunch of folks, they will tell you whether or not that wheel would look good or would not look good on the car. And lastly, do think about the construction of your wheels. It's a very important thing. You may want to go for a monoblock, you may want to go for a split, two-piece and three-piece. Now, monoblocks are pretty much your basic run-of-the-mill wheel that you see on the majority of cars, okay? They have one single piece, they're either cast or they're forged. The majority of the time, cast because of Moolah. Now, monoblock wheels are brilliant. I personally love them and I, on the whole, prefer them because there's less to go wrong, especially when you're spending a lot of money on them. Um, and also, something to really bear in mind, you don't have to rebuild them, you know? from time to time as you would do with splits. It's fantastic in that sense. A couple of drawbacks, you don't have the upgradability that you would have with the split wheel. And also, it can be quite heavy, okay? And by heavy, I do mean they weigh a ton. Although there is a school of thought, a heavier wheel means that it's gonna be a more comfortable ride on long journeys. So when we move on to splits, you have two types of split wheels, two or three. And in effect, that's what they are, two piece, you have um, two separate parts. You have the actual front of the wheel, and then you have the main part of the wheel, uh, which the front bolts into. Little bolts all the way around. Now, the great thing about these wheels is they are upgradable, okay? So, if you want to change the actual barrel of the wheel, you can do it. Nice and simple. It's a wicked little system. You have to just make sure that everything fits correctly, and if you know what you're doing, it's it's a fairly straightforward job. However, as with everything, if you're unsure, get a professional to do it. Now, split wheels do tend to be a little bit more expensive, which is understandable because of the construction. Don't let that put you off. Some of the best wheels are split wheels. The wheels on my car, the Sport Designs already are two-piece wheels made by BBS, and they are smashing. I like the look, and it resembles a GT3. Now, three-piece wheels are, again, three separate pieces. You have the outer barrel, the inner barrel, and then you have the front of the wheel. Now, remember the same things applies with the two-piece. So they can be quite expensive, but again, you get a lot more upgradability. So those are your do's and your don'ts when you're choosing your next wheels. I know it wasn't mega detailed, but hopefully it gives you enough. If you want any further information to do with wheels and you want to get an understanding of more and you want to know where to get some really good wheels, I'm going to leave a few links down in the comments below, so ensure you have a look at it. Anyway, where were we? Ah oh, yes, opening the box. These were well packed. <laughs> so, probably guess now, I'm going to be running BBS LM. Now, I'm going to be running 8x18 front ET50. 10x18 rear ET65. Now, if you're unaware, that is the exact same measurement on a 996. 
Now these are known as BBS LM F1s. It was a limited edition wheel that came out in 2007. Something of note, center cap is red. Signify it is a JDM or Japanese domestic market wheel. So you will see a ton of Japanese Exotica running these wheels. Because the majority of them came in a 5x114.3 PCD. PCD. A few came in a 5x120 PCD, what you'd find with BMWs, and even rarer, 5x130, just like these bad boys. A particular shade of gold as well is only available with this wheel, and you've got the same colour on the outer as you have in the inner, with black hardware and these wicked red stickers. Now, how I managed to find these wheels was a bit of luck. I was actually looking for some TE37s, the JDM six-spoke monoblock wheel that you find on a lot of wicked high-end Japanese supercars and sports cars. Again, I like the whole JDM scene. Being an ex-Honda boy myself, I thought I could make it work, especially on my 996. I was looking on eBay, and this came up on American eBay. And these particular wheels used to be on a Guards Red 996 Coupe, all the way from Thailand. Struck a deal with the owner, and lo and behold, a few months ago, these arrived. Now these are two-piece wheel. One piece is the barrel, the second piece is the face. In this particular face and barrel, even though this is an 18 by 10 bearing in mind, it's incredibly light, and I don't lift, bro. These babies are forged, so these actually lower the weight, or the unsprung weight, on each corner. Very, very cool. The red and the gold are gonna look magic. I hope you like them, because I absolutely adore them. I can't wait to see them on my 996. So the next step is what we're gonna do, get those tires fitted onto those wheels, and that's gonna be done by RPM Technic, those wizards. Absolutely love them, guys, and I can't wait to have that done. Should be in a couple of days' time. If you have opinions on the wheels I've chosen, great, tell me. If you don't like them, awesome, tell me. Conversation is always good. Talking about conversation, the latest unplugged video, talking about purists, is up here. Take a little look about it. You may be surprised where we go. If you like interviews and you want to see some great interviews from key people from the Porsche scene, have a look at these videos over here. And if you like what you watch, please subscribe, like, comment, and put that notification bell on. Until next time, be safe, be good, and much love.